Okay, look, guys, we're live. We'll get started. So the one thing I wanted to make sure I did there before I got started was record this onto my laptop because last week when we did the podcast with Jamie, I realised about 10 minutes in that I wasn't recording it, which was foolish. It was going out on Facebook, but it then meant I had to go into Facebook coding to get the information to then extract the, the MP3 from there and then trim it off. And it was all a bit of a faff, but we're all sorted now and there are people live watching on the page. So first things first, good evening, Mark. How are we doing? Okay, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Very good, good day and weekend. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Can you hear me all right? Because um, it's a bit glitchy for me for some reason. I can hear you fine, yeah. No problems. You can hear me fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's been a good week. Um, weekend's been relatively quiet just for a change in the current circumstances. Um, <laughs> yeah, all's good, thanks. Do you find in as much difference to the weekends? They feel very similar to every other day, don't they? Yeah, I mean, most uh, most of the days seem to merge into one at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's just a bit more restful at the weekend because um, obviously um, I'm still working at the moment. So uh, the weeks are pretty busy at the moment. There's a lot on. Um, so yeah, it's just nice to get a bit of rest and relaxation at the weekend for a change. Awesome. So for those of you that don't know Mark, Mark's a relatively new member, joined, uh, what month did he join? January? Um, February? Back at the beginning of January. January, yeah, I thought it was January, yeah. Um, I've, tried over the last, I've tried over the last few weeks to get uh, a bit of a mixture of stories. So some longer term members, some newer ones, some different, different sort of angles, if you will. Uh, and I thought Mark's got a really good story to share and is a relatively new member as well. So his uh, experiences of joining and getting started and what life was like before the Academy are a lot fresher in memory. So first things first, Mark, obviously there was a number of years of, of Mark before we met you. Give us a little potted summary of, of you. Okay, um, well, um, I'm from Macclesfield, born and bred in Macclesfield, um, so I grew up around here. Um, and um, as a child, I was always um, kind of hyper, always very energetic. Um, so I was always into my um, sports, um, used to run all over the place, um, used to play a lot of football as a younger kid, um, really enjoyed um, playing football at primary school, going into secondary. Um, and yeah, I mean, very active as a kid. Um, and I was always very thin. I could get away with um, eating whatever I wanted back then. Mm -hmm. um, and then went off to university and probably didn't do as much sport as I used to. Um, but then again, I wasn't eating like a king either. So um, I wasn't getting particularly overweight at university either. I was quite, um, Which uni quite did thin to? all the way through uni as well. Um, and went off to Stirling in Scotland. So um, quite a trek up there. But um, yeah, nice place. Um, nice place to live. Where did you study there? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. What did you study there? Yeah, I, stu I studied English, uh, so it was English studies up there. Um, so that was a good, uh, good degree. Um, I'd always sort of um, enjoyed reading stories and um, literature all the way through school. Um, so you know, I was kind of predicted to be a journalist by people back then. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I probably wasn't cynical enough to carry on with that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, like I say, I just enjoyed my degree up in Scotland. Um, had a good four years up there. Um, and then um, came back to Macclesfield because there weren't really much um, in the way of jobs up there. Um, so just came back down to where I knew and set up base back down here again. Um, and yeah, I mean, like I say, Going through university, I didn't play football, even though I was on the National Tennis Centre um, on campus. I didn't play much tennis either, even though I used to love playing that. Um, so when I came back again, I was sort of doing crown green bowling. I got back into my football again. Um, so I was active. And then um, I suppose the first incident that um, sort of made me gain weight and uh, become a bit unfit and unhealthy um, I played five-a-side football and I got struck in the face by the football. So my contact lens flipped inside my eye. Um, and, um, yeah, it was pretty nasty. So I couldn't do any contact sports for about six months. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah, so back then, 
then I obviously ate what I wanted to. I wasn't really fussed because I'd burn it off. Um, I found myself unable to do the sports, but I was still eating like I'd normally eat. So I started to gain the weight around that time. Um, and then after recovering from that, going back to playing football again, got my first car. I wasn't walking to work anymore. Um, so, you know, losing any weight I put it on I started gaining more um, and yeah um, over the years um, obviously didn't really do any other exercise apart from playing football as well so I was never really a gym person um, and I gained the weight and another incident happened which um, I ended up um, I had a stone wall in my old house um, we were washing a shed an outhouse and as we came to pull the shed down, the stone wall collapsed and fell across my left foot. So then I ended up having a toe amputated from the left foot. <laughs> so yeah, quite lucky with the old injuries. Um, so yeah, so again, you know, I was in hospital and the weight over those years, I just sort of ballooned in size. So I got to about 18 and a half stone at the worst. Mm -hmm. um, which was around about 2008. Um, and that was the first time where I thought, I need to do something about this. So around about that time, I, um, I basically went on a big diet, but I did a lot of the things that I'm doing again now. So um, it was calorie counting. Um, and I didn't limit myself to any particular foods, but I just made sure that I was staying under the calorie limit every day calorie deficit and back then I lost four and a half stone wow. um, awesome. which I was quite pleased with <laughs> um, but yeah it was just basically calorie deficit and lots of walking um, but then again over the years I've been kind of up and down so I didn't stay at that way I thought you know got to that way and thought yes I'm very pleased with myself and then carried on eating again <laughs> so um, yeah, and as I say, over the years, I've sort of yo-yoed on and off since then. Um, and yeah, I, I, last year in particular, I didn't have a very good year generally. Um, you know, I wasn't particularly um, you know, full of energy and full of beans. I was a bit mentally drained and run down. So I knew that I needed to do something yet again. And that's obviously when I came to the academy and... Um, yeah, that's my so story. We're rewinding back there on a, on a couple of things there. So you mentioned obviously your, your eye injury with your contact lens. So was that the, the contact lens damaged your eye or was it having to get it out that yeah. caused the problem or a bit of both? Um, yeah, I think it was a bit of both really because I went to the hospital and when I did it, it was like kind of like looking through frosted glass. So it, it flipped into my eye and I had to get it back out from there. And I think it, it basically caused a small sack of blood to appear at the back of my eye. Right. So they told me in the hospital that if I had any kind of impact on it, I would go blind in the eye. Right. Okay, goodness. Obviously, I couldn't do anything, um, and it very much limited me at the time. So I've, I've had a few times where my contact lens has just just rolled up, not not been knocked up as such, just rolled up on top of my eye, and thankfully I managed to like blink it out. But even then, it takes ages, and it's quite painful. So I can imagine actually getting knocked up there to be exponentially worse than that. And uh, so you're missing a toe as well, you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I often wonder myself, I've got various yeah. injuries. <laughs> but with my injuries, some of them are uh, wear and tear, but some of them are specific things that have happened over the years. I fell off a ladder when I was a club manager at Fitness First in uh, Sheffield. Um, I, a couple of years ago, I injured my ankle okay. and I put trampoline in. And there's a handful of things like that that you kind of think, if I hadn't have done that particular thing that particular day, how, how might life have been different over the last however many years? I could have got hit by a car instead, I suppose. Yeah, you never know. That's true. You never know, do you? So <laughs> uh, you mentioned yeah. there, about obviously, the successful weight loss there. You've got the four and a half stone weight loss through, through calorie counting and tracking. Uh, did you do anything else in that time frame that didn't work so well for you? Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, I probably rested on my levels more than anything. So once I got the weight loss and got into a good condition, 
Um, I just thought, well, I know I can do it. So, you know, I kind of took it a bit easier, I suppose. And because I was doing that and I wasn't really watching what I was doing and I would still eat and I would still drink, um, then, like I say, it was, it wasn't under control, really. Um, it wasn't a permanent decision for me. Right. So it was a diet um, and it worked. And then, you know, like I say, over time, I know I've been through various phases. So I know that I can drop a stone or two, but then it becomes more difficult and it's not sustained. So I knew that that kind of thing wasn't working for me. Um, and I needed to sort of change my mindset. I think you've hit the nail on the head there is uh, a lot of fit pros, people like like me essentially will, will slag off different diets and eating approaches and what have you. And there are plenty that aren't my cup of tea and I don't particularly feel that I want to recommend, but they all in theory work. If, if something's become well known enough that, that everyone knows about it, it will work if, if done properly. It's the then maintaining, as you said, it's the seeing it as a short term quick fix that you might stop and, and, and go back to old habits from. And, and that's really what I think we try and do is not just the, helping people understand what to do, but actually changing the habits and the mindsets and the beliefs behind that. So it just becomes what you do do on an ongoing basis. So you obviously, you said you had a, a less, yeah, good, yeah. less good year last year. That brings you up to sort of, you'd have done the briefing meeting. I think we did it right at the start of January. Had you heard much about the Academy much prior to that or did you only just find out at that point? Um, kind of seen you online a few times um because obviously i'm on facebook quite a lot and um you do a lot of successful advertising on facebook and i'd seen you there and i'd sort of contemplated i'd seen the sort of um eight week challenge that you did so i sort of contemplated coming to a meeting a while ago but i don't know why just at the time i didn't really feel like um i wanted to go at that point in time for whatever reason just didn't feel like. Um, so, you know, this time around, what, what happened was I obviously got onto your um, subscription list for blogs and by the start of the year, um, John the 1st, um, New Year's Day, I was sitting on my phone and I was just looking through and I saw a blog that said, New Year, Old You. And I thought, mm, this is interesting. So I went into it and started through <laughs> Um, and yeah, I mean, it just resonated with me because, um, you know, the whole sort of new year, new you approach, it, you've seen it all before. Um, it's what Jim tries to make you do. Um, and to be fair, I had tried to sign up for um, another gym in Macclesfield a couple of years prior. Um, and I thought I'd go to that. Um, and it didn't work because I turned up and I didn't get the instruction that I needed. So I was basically showing around bits of equipment. This is what this does. This is what that does. Um, and then that was it. You were left to your own devices. So like I say, that didn't really work for me. So I saw this blog and I thought, you know, I'm going to actually investigate and see if any of my friends know about the academy. So I kind of had it in the back of my head that Katrine, who now lives back in Denmark, um, who I used to um, see sons in my son's year at school, um, I kind of had it that in my mind that she was going to the academy in the past. So I reached out on Facebook, asked for recommendations, um, and she came straight back and said, yeah, it's fantastic. You really will like it. You've got to try it. So obviously I got that. Um, and then my cousin James, who goes to the gym as well, um, he chipped in and said, yeah, you'll love it, Mark. You know, um, if you lose your weight, you'll get it for nothing, but I'm sure you'll love it and you'll carry on. So I thought, okay, fair enough. I've got a couple of good friends there that I know um, who I trust. And yeah, um, I just thought, why not try? So that's when I went to the uh, really introduction. I, I only messaged Katrine on... Um Thursday, I think it would be. Uh, recently, uh, my two oldest sons, yeah. so I still read to every night. Um, we've finished a very long book because I only have them for half a week and we normally do a chapter a night. Sometimes books go on for months. We'd finished one. They said they didn't quite fancy a long book. So I've been doing um, Ripley's Believe It or Not with them. They've got that on one of the bookshelves, just picking out a number of facts and they have to, I say, 
I'll give them an, an indicator as to what it is and they'll try and guess and get the answer. And one of the Ripley's Believe It or Not facts was the uh, oldest flag in the world, which is the Danish flag, which Katrine had mentioned to me several times in the past. So I took a little picture of that page and sent it to her and she, and she replied. <laughs> and, uh, it's funny. Uh, so obviously that brought you up to the briefing meeting. You booked in for that and turned up and then walked in the door the first time. How, how did you find that? Um, I mean, kind of a bit like starting this interview tonight in a way, <laughs> um, you know, kind of um, slightly apprehensive and wondering what people would think of me. But by the same token, um, I was definitely committed to it. I knew that I wanted to do something um, and I just wanted to see what it was all about. Um, so, you know, walking in there, I was quite optimistic and positive um, and like I say, from what I'd seen of um, your blogs and from what I'd seen of the Academy Online, it was all um, very positive and it was about um, you know, encouraging people to be the best that they could be, really. Um, so I thought, yeah, I'm really interested to see what this is about um, and how it works. So I, I went in open-minded um, and, yeah, I mean, straight away, just listening to some of the things that were said on the night and meeting yourself and Faye um, who were sort of hosting it all um, it just felt right it felt comfortable um, it didn't feel like I was joining a gym where everybody was expecting me to walk out looking like Cristiano Ronaldo after five minutes <laughs> um, it just felt more real and human um, so yeah I mean straight away it didn't seem like a typical gym to me it seemed like um, well, basically a club where everybody could sort of get on and, um, you know, it was a social thing as well. Um, and like I say, you know, I just felt really positive vibes about it. Um, and again, you know, I didn't know, sort of going in and knowing that there was the, the weight loss challenge. I think that's a good thing because it gives you something to focus on and gives you a target to aim towards. Um, but I didn't know how long I would keep coming for because I thought, well, you know, if I get the principles right, then maybe I can carry on and do something for myself. But straight away, when you sort of put on the form that you want to commit for sort of 12 months, do you see yourself coming here? I actually thought to myself, yes, I do. <laughs> I can see what it's all about now. And I feel like I do want to make it more of a long-term commitment because that's what will make it work for me. So, yeah, I was quite positive right from the, the get-go, really. Awesome. And then you obviously got going, uh, you had your coaching day, your first sessions, what was your experience like in those first few weeks? Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, as I say, I'd sort of made my mind up coming into it that I really wanted to do something and, you know, I wanted to change um, myself mentally and physically for the better, you know, so for me, it was like, it, it was a really positive experience right from the get-go. Um, Right away, the first session I had was um, Irvin and it was a boxing session okay. um, and it was really intense and I was thinking, crikey, you know, this is hard work, but it was really enjoyable as well. Um, and, you know, just like I say, from the start, knowing that I was you know, really enjoying what I was doing made me think, actually, yeah, I'm going to be able to keep this going um, and, you know, I met a lot of good people early on as well. So there was a, a woman there called Sally, um, who um, I don't think is coming anymore, unfortunately, but she sort of showed me around and showed me how to do certain things and made me feel at home and, you know, kind of took me under a wing a bit. Um, so, you know, that was really nice that I actually kind of partnered up. How, how old is Sally? How old is she? Um, Sally's... Um, Without being cruel, I think she's an older woman. <laughs> okay, I'm just thinking which one you meant, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, she's, she's involved with the church, I think, in Macclesfield. Um, but yeah, she, she was really good early on. And like I say, just everybody around was really positive and encouraging and, you know, wanting you to do the best that you could. Um, so they were all helpful. And yeah, it was just, like I say, right from the beginning, I felt really good about it all. Were you so much? Sorry, John. Were you sore particularly in those first few weeks? Um, 
Yeah, um, <laughs> obviously I was doing things that I've not really done before as well. Um, so not being a gym person, I've never really done um, squats or lunges or um, weightlifting or anything really. Um, so it was all new to me. Um, and But, you know, I think once you keep going and you keep pushing through any initial um, soreness and tiredness and fatigue, then you, you can just keep it going. Um, I think for me as well, the other thing that was a, a major thing for me was um, I've always been a bit of a night person, so I'd always be up late in the evenings. Um, and I actually started going in at six in the morning because I thought it would fit in best with the work and the life balance. So, um, you know, that was a big thing for me. But I felt really energised. I felt like, you know, it really set me up for the day then. Um, and that's what really worked well for me early on, I think. It just sort of gave me the energy to go every single day. Okay, awesome. Uh, so obviously, you mentioned a few times about not having tried gyms particularly before you joined one. What, what was it you'd say about conventional gyms that didn't really appeal to you? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I just think, you know, I've, I've seen one or two people over the years who... Um, like there was a guy who used to work with at Boots, for example, and he was um, always going to the gym and he was getting really beefy and he was a nice guy. And then, you know, he basically turned into something that wasn't so nice, he was quite aggressive and, you know, and it didn't take me long to realise he was doing steroids basically to build himself up. You know, I wasn't really into anything like that. You know, it wasn't really my, my thing at all. You know, I was only interested in becoming fitter and healthier um, and you know I'm not saying everybody that goes to a gyms like that but it was just you know to some extent it was that sort of consciousness of going to a gym and seeing other people around me that were wanting to get a six pack or you know I, I knew that I'd never be that kind of person <laughs> so yeah it just didn't really and, and again you know I like playing football and team sports um, because I like that camaraderie as well, which a lot of the time you can see people going to the gym, they're just running on treadmills or, you know, they're doing things in isolation almost. Um, and that's not me either. You know, I'd want to be sort of alongside other people doing things. So, Awesome. So you've been a member now for what, five and a half months now. How's the whole thing gone? What results have you achieved? How, how have things changed? Um. I think realistically, um, you know, my whole life's kind of changed. Um, so I've lost over three stone in weight during the last five months, five and a half months. Um, and I've managed to keep that going during lockdown as well. So I started off, um, I did 20 pounds in eight weeks challenge um, and lost nearly two stone on that. So I was really pleased about that. Um, but this time I didn't think, oh, that's great. I've done it. And you know that's me finished. Um, my mindset's changed, so now it's something that I just want to continue with, and you know I want to just keep fit and healthy all the time because I think it's the basis for everything. Um, you know you can't do anything in life without actually being healthy and active. Um, it just sets you up for everything. So um, yeah, like I say, the mindset's changed as well. Um, it's not just the fact that I've been losing weight and getting healthier and more physically active. It's just the whole sort of positivity that I've got from it as well. And, um, you know, even in lockdown, I felt quite happy. Um, I've not been sort of dwelling on things and being miserable about stuff. Um, you know, I've been looking at the positive side of it and the fact that we can go walking at night, me and my son. Um, you know, walk for miles in peace and quiet and nice evenings with starry skies. You know, it's actually quite a nice, pleasant time in that way. I've seen a lot of um, the photos you've been sharing when you guys go on for walks and some really, really nice scenery you've been taking pictures of. Yeah, yeah. I just think, like I say, the whole sort of um, mindset for me has changed. So, yes, I've lost a lot of weight, but... I feel physically a lot better for it and mentally better for it as well. Um, and that's why I've done it and that's why I will continue to do it. You know, um, I've lost my three stone. 
um, kind of set a target for himself to lose four by the end of the year. Um, and, Easy. you know, what I want to do is keep it going now. So, um, and then when I have reached it, I'll find other goals and other aspirations because I think I've got to be looking forward all the time and looking to do something else. Um, you know, but I will keep it going without a doubt. Definitely there. So you mentioned, obviously, the, the, the change that, these changes have meant in your sort of your everyday life. Any particular examples of how you found it? Uh, does it help at work? Does it help in other aspects of what you do? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, the fact that I've been getting up earlier and getting myself active and ready for the day. Um, I used to find myself going into the office and I'd be quite sort of lethargic in the morning. I wouldn't really want to be you know, bounding around and um, blasting out the best work and giving out the best ideas at nine in the morning. Um, you know, early morning meetings weren't really me either. Um, but now, you know, I've been going in to work prior to lockdown. I actually was really energised and um, focused and more determined. So I was getting more done. Um, I think it's probably helped me to sort of because we're doing more during the course of the day as well, I've been able to come home and relax a bit more in the evenings. And then even now, you know, it's, it's made a difference because um, the fact that I'm physically active all the time um, makes me a bit more tired in the evenings as well. So sleeping better is also a big part of it for me. Um, I've had two cats after having a young child, and the two cats have kept me awake all the time. <laughs> so. Um, but, you know, I think getting a good night of sleep um, is really important as well as mm. physical exercise and eating properly, um, you know, just makes a difference to, to everything really, you know, just like I say, mentally feeling better about my whole situation and, um, you know, working life, family life, you know, just, just feels a lot better now. So you mentioned a few times there about the eating side of it. What changes have you made? What would like an average day or week's food look like prior to the academy and what does it look like now? Um, quite a huge difference to be fair. Um, you know, prior to the academy, sort of leading up to last Christmas, um, I would come home from work, I would hit the crisps. So I'd be, you know, having two or three packets of crisps, I'd be eating chocolate. Um, I wouldn't think anything of eating large pizzas, you know, I was a big fan of pizza, so, um, and, you know, I've never been a big drinker, but, um, you know, I just wasn't looking after myself, really, and um, so now I am, um, and I'm looking at what I'm doing every single day. Um, you know, some people might think going into my fitness pal is a bit of a pain in the backside, but I actually think it's... A really good investment of time is something that it doesn't take very long at all to do really but as long as you're tracking what you're doing and keeping an eye on it there's no reason why you shouldn't lose weight if that's your target or maintain your weight and you know just just actually um eat sensibly um and again i think if you're not eating sensibly and you fall into bad habits really so you're eating lots of things or um, you're eating bad things um, that's a, a cycle that will continue um, whereas if you're eating more healthily you don't crave those things as much in my experience so you know I don't really want to eat a massive chocolate bar now if somebody put one in front of me I genuinely wouldn't want to go oh yeah great thanks very much um, you know I'd rather have a big um, bowl of pasta or something than a big chocolate bar um, so, you know, I've changed my eating habits definitely, but um, I think the main thing is keeping the calorie count down. Um, and yeah, I've obviously done my protein intake and um, looked at eating more real food. So, you know, sort of chicken, salmon, um, vegetables. Because um, again, through the academy, just learning about um, the calorie density. Uh, low calorie density foods um you know that that's made a difference to what i'm eating as well so yeah everything's changed really have you found those changes fitting in with with family life with eating together as a family is that have you all made changes or how's that worked 
Um, at times it's kind of been me by myself a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, we, we've, we've eaten the same sort of main meals and things during the course of the day, but um, my wife and my son have, have had different things to me, I must admit. Um, you know, but we do, when we have like gusto meals and things like that, we're obviously all eating the same things as a family. Um, you now, and I think my son has become healthier as a result of me becoming healthier as well, because he's sort of doing these evening walks with me and he's getting out and about more. Um, so we're both healthier in that front. I think my wife probably started off thinking that she was going to lose a bit of weight herself and, you know, um, kind of joined in on the diet a little bit, but we don't like the same food, so it's a bit difficult for us, really. Um, so, you know, she tends to eat separately to me on occasion. So, um, yeah, it's had some impact, but it's not been, we're all eating the same things anymore, so. Okay. So, other than perhaps a couple of little challenges with the food there, everything else you've mentioned has been, like, massively positive. What, what would you say has been, is there any, any downsides to it? Any harder bits? Any more challenging or frustrating parts to the last five and a half months? Um, I think the last couple of weeks are have been probably a bit more difficult um just the whole lockdown situation and i think being in lockdown at first i was, I was still really up for it and still wanting to, to carry on and keep going and you know full of energy and determination um but mentioning what i did before about going to the academy at six in the morning um had a big difference um in my life and then i don't really feel like at the moment, I want to get out of bed the same as I did before. So my body clock and the routines changed. And I just think that whole sort of routine thing is what's worked well for me. So obviously, everyone's been affected by it, haven't they? Um, and I find a different normal um, and a different daily routine as a result. Um, so I've kind of... I wanted to keep booking into the early sessions, so, you know, 6 or 7 a.m., but I found myself doing them later on the same day, watching them back rather than joining in at the same time a lot of the time recently. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just things like that, it's just, it has been a bit more difficult to sort of keep going with the circumstances as they are at the moment. It's just a bit surreal for everybody, I think. It is hard. I, I found the same with my workouts as well. Um, only this morning, my wife was saying, just go and have your workout because I'd meant to do it first thing, as I always do. And invariably, I get uh, like a shiny new object syndrome. I think, oh, I'll, I'll, this morning, I wanted to do the website, the, the page and the event for the, the Rise 1000 event. And I should have done my workout first to get myself in a better mood and better yeah. focus and then done that. But I just wanted to get started, did that. And by mid-morning, I wasn't grumpy, but I clearly wasn't as up for stuff as I could be otherwise. My wife said, go and have your workout. I had my workout, instantly felt better. But it's, it's hard sometimes to remember that when you don't have the structure of the day that kind of forces that to happen a little bit. Cool, so you mentioned that that's brought us up to date. Uh, yeah. You said about continuing with your, your weight loss and then potentially some other goals thereafter. Have you any thoughts what those other goals may look like? Um, yeah, I mean, again, you know, just look, um, what people are doing so um, I, I personally would like to get more toned and um, increase my muscle mass a bit and you know build myself up a bit physically um, so you know seeing what Faye's been doing recently with her weightlifting as well um, you know that's that's something that I would like to do when I get back to the academy um, you know just build myself up a little bit more because um, before I gained weight I was quite weedy to be honest, um, quite a lanky guy. <laughs> um, so, you know, just actually getting that sort of muscle mass would be nice. It just made me, I think it would make me feel better as well, to be fair. Um, but there's other goals in life, you know, obviously, um, you know, to be a bit sort of more aspirational about things um, without being materialistic about stuff as well. You know, I think I need to sort of, look forward to a good future for all of us really um and yeah i mean i, I just think the whole sort of um exercise and um making myself fit and healthy sets myself up to do more in life so i mean 
a lot of the things there as well, you know, there's little things for me because I'm 44 years old and I can't ride a bike. Never been able to ride a bike. So just for me, that's a goal. I want to be able to get on a bike and go for a bike ride. And, you know, it's just little things like that that I think if I've got something in mind and I want to do it and it's something to aim towards, then that's good for me. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, you did the the first Rise event. Had you, I can't remember, had you intended to do Born Survivor before that? Yeah, yeah, I was signed up for that, yeah. I thought you were, I thought you were, yeah. So obviously that got put paid to, got uh, cancelled or rearranged, whatever it is, but you did Rise instead, which for anyone watching who doesn't know, that was a home workout type version of Born Survivor that we did, 108 of us took part in that uh, two weeks ago yesterday just announced this morning that in another three weeks we're going to do the next stage of that which is rise 1000 you know 1000 of us taking part local maxonian people members friends family etc 1000 of us doing it is the next target but rewinding how, how did you find the first rise event um brilliant i really did <laughs> I was a bit crazy, really, because um, I've got a garden. It's a really nice garden at the back of the house here. Um, but it's overlooked by the two flats on Hurtsfield. So I was doing all of the exercises and running around my garden and probably overlooked by, you know, two tower blocks full of people who thought I was going mad. Um, but, yeah, no, I really loved it. It was really good fun. Um, and, again, you know, for one hour and 10 minutes or one hour and 20 minutes, I think it was in the end. Um, just being a part of something like that and so many other people involved. Um, you know, it was brilliant that everyone could join together to do something in the current circumstances. Um, you know, just seeing all the different faces on Zoom and everyone doing their own thing in the garden, counting the children around. You know, it was brilliant. It was really good fun. Um, and I definitely, definitely recommend um, anybody who wants to do um, Rise 1000. I think it would be fantastic. It would be really good. I've had a few people point out uh, today that I've, I've put on the Facebook description it's going to be the biggest ever Zoom workout. Uh, it, it can't be on Zoom because Zoom has a limit of 250 people for the, the main version. I think you can get an upgrade that gets it to 500 people. We definitely can't get 1,000 on it. So I'll have to figure out actually how we're going to deliver that. But I know there are systems that my wife was on a call recently yeah. with work that was 20,000 people on. So there's clearly systems that can support wow. that actually to investigate what they are. I know, I'm adding to it. Um, so that's pretty much brought us up to date there. Uh, for those who are watching live on Facebook, I'm just going to read through the comments that you guys have put on already. If you have any questions, any observations, anything you'd be interested in hearing Mark's thoughts on, then let us know now because we'll finish in the next few minutes. Uh, Leanne Blunt has put, hi Mark, will Tash and Finn come on for a wave? Are they around? <laughs> um, Finn's right in the middle of the game from lots of things. You don't interrupt him in the middle of the game. And like an Xbox uh, game, is that, or PlayStation or something? Uh, yeah, he's got a PC. So, um, yeah, he's, he's in the middle of a battle on um, Siege, I can see him from here, so... Um, yeah, and um, we've actually got um, a socially distant um, relative over this evening. So, okay, cool. uh, so uh, yeah, I don't want to interrupt that at the moment. But yeah, I, I um, know the feeling. Matt, Ollie I'll, and I'll Jamie, step away on the comments afterwards. Only and Jamie, my two oldest sons, when they're playing Fortnite, I um, they, they could do with working on how well they come off it. Shall we say they don't like being interrupted because invariably they're in the last ten or twenty <laughs> and they feel they're going to get a victory royale and they don't appreciate us me trying to get them off it. Uh, Jamie says you can hear us both fine. That was obviously right at the start. No, Kim says fine. evening, John and Mark. Um, Leanne said she wondered if the tow story would feature. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's book, Studied English in Scotland, lol. That's Dave Edge, who obviously joined the same time as you. Julie Brockhurst says, hi. Kim says, amazing weight loss, well done. Dave again says, just shy of three stone myself, my fellow grunter. Once this lockdown is over, we can push each other to the next level. <laughs> cool, just refresh that. Uh, okay, yeah, we have got a question come through. So Jamie says, how many sessions per week did you start with? compared to what you did just before lockdown? 
Um, so right at the very beginning, um, started off doing about three sessions a week. Um, and then after about two or three weeks, I think it was, I probably built up to doing about four or five a week. Um, so I, I just wanted to go as often as I could do really. Um, but then since lockdown, um, it's kind of been up and down a little bit, I must be honest. Um, you know, there's been some weeks where I've done a session every day, and then there's been others where I've done it sort of two or three times a week. Um, it's not always as easy to do, I don't think. And, you know, also with other people around you, they give you a bit more inspiration and other people to sort of say, bloody hell, that was hard, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> just to actually talk to when you're actually doing it as well, um, which you don't obviously have at the moment but um yeah I, I probably went through a spell where I was going quite often I maybe even did you know six times a week to the Saturday one as well um but yeah I, I just think at the moment as long as I'm still doing something I'm still exercising every day and you know keeping moving then um I'll still maintain what I'm doing and possibly you know lose a bit more weight along the way as well you hit the nail on the head there. I think um, everyone finds lockdown harder. I know it's different for different people. I've definitely found it harder with the exercise to stay motivated, particularly the last couple of weeks. I've, I'd say every single workout I've started the last couple of weeks, I've really felt at the start, I can't be arsed with this. I've not looked forward mm. to them. I've not wanted to do them. But I've done it for long enough that I know that if I do it, I'll feel at least somewhat better. And worst case scenario, it won't be a particularly effective workout, but it'll probably help maintain me roughly where I am rather than slipping backwards. I think it's powerful for people to hear that that is the case. I think there's a lot of stuff out on social media about people crushing lockdown and smashing it and having the, using it as an opportunity to get in the best shape of their life. And that's, that's fine for people perhaps who that is the case for, but it doesn't mean there's not a huge value in what we're doing that at the very least stopping yourself sliding backwards. Uh, Leanne's also commented yeah. saying, when you and Tash popped Hayden's birthday card in, you both looked incredible. It's nice to hear, isn't it? Sorry, what was that? Leanne commented saying, when you and Tash popped Hayden's birthday card in, you both looked incredible. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Thank you. Um, you didn't look bad yourself, Leanne, so... <laughs> Awesome, cool. I think that's all the questions, guys, we've got there on social media. Uh, I think that's pretty much brought us up to date. Any final words of wisdom, Mark? Any recommendations? Any, anything that you might... If you could talk to Mark from, say, a year ago, what might you say to him? Uh, well, um, a year ago, I wasn't in a good place at all, really. So, um, you know, I was, I was pretty down and um, wasn't very optimistic. So, you know, now I'm completely the opposite, I think. And, you know, I just think that um, having that positive mindset and um, just being able to focus on things and um, you know, I, I'm a different person in many ways. So, um, you know, it'd be great to, to go back and give myself a kick up the arse, to be perfectly honest. But, <laughs> um, yeah, um, I'm just happy to be where I am now, really. So. Good to hear. Fantastic stuff. Cool. It's really interesting to hear your story, Mark. I think everyone has different stories and I think it's, it's great. I find getting a balance of stories because some people identify with different people more and, and what experiences they've had. And, and I think we're getting a great mixture of things over the, over the weeks in the podcast. So guys watching now, thank you for your time. Guys who listen to this later on in the podcast format, I hope you enjoyed that. And, and Mark, thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah, thanks very much. Appreciate it, John. Thank you.